show view, then display a list of tickets on that page and allow a user to create new tickets for that flight. So how'd it go? Any uh, bugs to chase down? Any questions? Nothing at all? Nothing about... To be specific, there was red text in there and no one was kind of like thrown by that. No, nothing. What was it? What, what were you asking? Were thrown by uh, regex? I mean, we don't have to talk about that in particular, but uh, pre pretty new. Any, any questions about that? Uh, did I miss the part where we need to use regex? Um, it, it was in the, the hints for the um setting an input for your uh, seat number or seat, you know, code. Oh, yeah. Pretty much okay. gives you the actual regex you need. Yeah, but... yeah that's okay. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about that because uh, I just, I looked at that and I did that, but I don't know anything about re regex. So yeah, if we could just talk about what that is. That'd be great. Yeah. It's in the lecture, so I used it, but I don't know like why I used it or, or not the lecture in the instructions of the lab, sorry. Yeah, so it's, it's this is actually a really um, easy example to follow. So you look at it, it's saying uh, square brackets A through F. What's that, what, what that is telling the computer is to say, it's saying match um, a character in this position that ranges from A through F. And then in the next one, you can see it says one through nine. So the second character, should range one through nine. And then, then it says that slash D, that's, that's actually, I'm pretty sure that's exactly the same as saying like zero through nine. So it's saying the third character should range zero through nine. And then the question mark on the end in this example makes the third match optional. So that way you can account for something like A1, you know, so it doesn't have to be A99. It can be A1. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So the question mark, and if you put, two D's in there? Is that like, would it be 100 through nine? Could it be 100 through 999? Like, I, like, a, like another, like at the, at the end, you have the, 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 uh, what is that forward slash? I, I get my slash, but you have the- So you're saying if you, if you wanted to add more stuff, yeah, you could, you could keep on adding more like positions to, to match, yeah. Okay, but like specifically with regarding regarding the D, <clears throat> is that's basically just another. So you have one through nine, and then the D is another number that could be zero through nine. So it can be ten through ninety nine, essentially, right? Is what the D is saying in that? Is that correct? right? Okay. So if you put another D in that, could it be basically one through nine hundred and ninety nine? So if it was. Yeah, I think so. Let me double check. Hey, John, I just posted in Slack a thing called Rubular, which lets you kind of plug in a test string and then plug in a pattern just to kind of play around with it. And it's got the quick reference underneath. So cool. Could be and it's fun to say Rubular. Um, yeah, John, I think that would work. Okay. Because I think I'm understanding what it, well, I understand what it does. And it, so it's like, yeah. if, if you put that in a few times, then it would be X, like number of digits past the original digit are optional, but they could, it, it would accept it if you did put in a larger digit. I think the, the question mark only refers to the previous position. So like the, whatever the last thing you entered in. Okay. Yeah, zero or one of. If you if you look at the rubular thing in the project yeah. quick reference, it's in the third column, where it says the third down, third column. It has a question mark zero or one of. Then it's like a asterisk is zero or more of a plus one or more of. So I think the easiest way to wrap your head around this is kind of play around putting in your own sample test strings and reg, reg expressions in this thing, because mm -hmm. it will show you as you start to type in the reg expression, if it's matching or not. So, okay. Tools like that are, are incredibly useful with with. Yeah, this is great. I'm just looking at this. Yeah. yeah, I haven't started playing around with it, but the screenshot of like how it works is awesome. Thanks, John. And thanks, Hunter.
for sure. I mean, Hunter, on, on paper, this would be a pretty bad user experience, right? Like I was I was thinking at first, like, why don't you just give them a, a drop down A through F and then one through nine or something? Because of your, most of your, I, I felt well inclined to put it heavy instructions there, you know, that it yeah. might have to put no, it here because you're going to break the form of the lines. That, that's, that's a great point, actually. I was actually um, thinking the, uh, we should do a, the plain diagram with a little button somehow. <laughs> But isn't this kind of in regards to what, what we were talking or what I think came up in question the other day is like, if the person wasn't necessarily using the UI, like the drop down menus and was in or like, or am I totally off base there? Mm, I, I, I'm not quite sure what you're like. I, Hunter said something, or, I'm sorry, David said something about like, you could, you can interact, send stuff to the server without necessarily using the drop down menus. Um, and then you could input stuff that was outside of like, if your drop down menu only has A through F, one through nine, but then you're interacting with the, you're submitting queries to the server or whatever, not through that drop down menu, that's when you need the match this, yeah. because you yeah. could be interacting with the, with the server, querying the server without that UI. Yeah. Okay. So, but you could have the regex, and you could have a drop-down menu too. Exactly. So you could have but a check in for it. That's so, what you should have, right? Like, so because because then you this, only have the option on the drop-down to do this stuff. But if someone was interacting with the server without that drop-down, it won't let you submit things that are outside of what it's looking for, right? Right. In in this case, we're actually using it in the front end and our in the back end. So yes. in a ticket schema, you should have uh, a match. Uh, attribute of your seat property right yeah so, so that's that's sort of acting as validation there but then you're also preventing the form from being submitted unless the user input matches that pattern with that's that's within the the show yeah. yeah but yeah I, I actually agree with wit something some sort of different ui would be probably a better user experience in general just remember front end is the user experience and server side you're preventing your database getting screwed up by somebody which is why it would be important in a lot of cases to have both the the front end like you can put this is what we'll accept as the inputs on the front end and this is what the server will intake without not putting in the inputting the information or the data correct definitely okay. yeah All right. Um, any any other questions? Does anyone have any bugs you want to take a look at? Could we? Oh, sure. Oh, I mean, I this is something like um, I like I did like looked up stuff outside about um, uh, like how to format tables basically sure. um, and get the information into tables. And I'm going to pull it up real fast just so I can, but in the table, like you have the table header, the table, um, table body section. Um, hold on one second. Sorry. It is in here. Um, okay. Yeah, here it is. Uh, so, um, what, so you have, you have the table tag then table head tag and then the th tag for each of the headers within the header and then the um the td tag for each of the data data um columns within the body what does the tr tag do i've realized it's, it's important it's a it's a row oh that's okay that yeah, thank you. Sure. No, it's okay. <laughs> no, I just like it. Now it makes sense because uh, like I was like, this isn't formatting right, and then I realized I was missing those, and it put me. <laughs> ah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So I was just, and that's exactly what it did. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I should have been able to like, yeah, it just puts it in a row. <laughs> no worries. It's, no. You know, I'm not I'm not a lot of sleep. Sometimes dumb questions. Uh, no, absolutely, absolutely. Thanks. <laughs> um, so everyone feeling pretty good about this uh, 
section of the Mongoose Flight Lab? Sort of um, show of hands. Are you, all, are you on this stage or still catching up a little bit? question about the lab. I'm not really understanding um, in the user story number three and four um, when it says when viewing the list of flights I want to click on a detail link displayed next to each flight to view all the properties for that flight mm -hmm. um, and it says this show this show page should include each of its tickets. I'm just having like a hard time like visualizing how that should look so I'm not really sure how to do that in my code. Sure. Um... Here, let me pull mine up real quick. Which, um, which sec, which quite like part of the thing were we looking at? It was number three of the user story. Implement the user, okay. Implement. Can you see this okay? You have yeah. to forgive my terrible styling. Um, so here's here's my list of flights. And then there, I just made this little details link. And when I click on it, I can view the flights details and here are all the tickets. Okay. I think that this will make more sense uh, once we keep on adding more stuff to it. I see Wit smiling. Don't, don't, don't give me a hard time for this CSS. Just ran through this really quickly. Okay, thanks. SJ, does, does that kind of clarify? Um, yes. I mean, yeah, kind of. I just wasn't able to get the seat or the price um, in that like ID page where like the details page. So I only just have like the input for the ticket and like add ticket, but you I You want to take a look? Sure. Um, So this is my add flights page, add flight, and then all flights. And then when I click on a detail, mm -hmm. this is really just all I have because I wasn't really understanding what to do, but this is my code. No, okay. it's not it, one second. So I think the first thing you want to do on your so we're, this is the show.ejs, right? Where you're displaying ticket detail. Yeah, show that. Um, I think you'll also want to render the details of the flight itself. So like flight.airline, flight.airport, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Do you have? That is in the show, in the EJS. Oh, is it? Am I just not seeing it? Can you click back to your browser? Did I just totally miss it? Oh, actually, maybe not. Okay, maybe not. I don't know. Are we sending the data um, for the flight to this page? I guess not, because it's not showing up. I mean, oh, it is oh, here, no. but I don't think I'm, I didn't do it in that detail. So uh, let's say, let's do this one. That's weird. Oh, it looks like it's showing up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm going, I'm going blind. It is, it is there. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Cool. So then, are you able to add a ticket? Uh, I don't think so. I don't. Yeah, I don't think so because I don't have like the seat or the price or I don't know if this works to be honest. Console login. Okay. Um. Okay. So there's your add ticket form. Yes. Where, wait one second. I I'm assuming I would have to log it here in my create ticket. Yeah, that'd be a good good place to have it. It looks like you're console logging flight online 14. Okay. Yeah. So then would I console log just the ticket? Well, I think. I think you're going to need to make sure that you have the flights 
ID because you want to find a flight by its ID. So let's let's confirm that you're getting that rec.params.id. And then we also want to make sure that you're getting the rec.body. Okay, so I'm console logging. Uh, I just don't know where I would do that. Uh, you, you can do it um, even before line, line 12 if you want. Body. And then what else? I forgot. Uh, Rec.params.id. So you're finding that flight um, by those parameters. Yeah, so we, we can start there. Um, let me, I guess, just do this for now. So if I press add ticket and it doesn't work, yeah, I don't, not getting it. I think, I don't think it's letting you submit until you fill out that field. Okay. Let's try to do this. I'm not sure if it was text. The regex expression, um, Oh, wait, I don't know, maybe not. Sorry. Can you, can you, can we look at the input? Um, oh, look, it, it, it console logged uh, rec params.id, I think. Yeah. Yeah, did, did you see it pop up in your uh, terminal? Yeah. Nice, okay, so it looks like we're getting that. Um, and then, did it go through okay? Why don't you open up Azure? Let's uh, find that. Yeah, I think it, yeah. That's weird. My timestamps weren't working before, but okay. Um, do I have to finish, like, do I have to wait for this to finish loading? David, you might want to stop recording if she's going to show her uh, code just for a moment. That's okay, though. Thank you. I'm not sure which one it was. If you make, um, if you expand that side menu, we'll be able to at least see the, the very last two digits to be like 7D40. Yeah, there you go. This one. One second. Can you hit escape? Yeah. Hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't have a tickets property. Can we look at your schema? Mm -hmm. It's so, but it shows it in the in the console log, right? Yeah. Weird. Hmm. Are we saving? Go back to your controller real quick. Are we saving it? Yeah, flight. That's save. Hmm. Can we see your model? Sure.
Can anyone see something that I'm missing? I don't see anything that would be breaking it. I'm just curious, why is it pushing? Oh, they're talking to me right now. Um, I thought it was supposed to push and miss, like the details were gonna- No, I'm sorry, I meant, this is what has me curious. It looks like it's working and then it's not saving. Are you saving? Yeah, jump back to your control. But should that ticket there have a timestamp on it too? Yeah, yeah. timestamps on for the ticket as well. And I'm not seeing a timestamp on that. So could that be a sign of something going wrong? I think she's it console should. logging. She's console logging before it saves. So it oh, would, okay. And that would, that's where the timestamp would be applied. Yeah. Okay. Um, what? After line 16, could you console log error and see if there's an error? And then just add a ticket, see what happens. Okay. Blop, blop. You might have to kill restart the server. server. Yeah. Yeah. Is is the price hard coded in there? Uh, I'm not sure. Sorry. Yeah. Go go ahead and uh, submit it again. Let's see your error. I'm just, I just noticed there was a price, but there's only the input for the seat. Why validation failed? Ah. And save. That would be why. Jump back to your show.ejs. And go to your, oh, okay. So let's add an input for the uh, price. It's only being fed one of the things in the, in the yeah. scale. Yeah. It's Where getting... would it include the inputs for the price? Uh, you can do it like right below where you have the, uh, the seat. In the, yeah. In, in your form. In, wait. You in... have a form on, yeah. Yeah. So an input for my price. Yeah. yeah. And you'll want to take out that required pattern and I think you'll do minimum in zero. Yeah. And then maybe type number, I guess. And should it be required? Oh, uh, what's the spelling on that? Um, it won't break it. This this should work. Uh, go, yeah. Refresh and let's let's give this a shot. I mean, I'm assuming this is the price. Yeah. Put in That's, some placeholder text so you know which is which when you, I mean, you don't need to do it right now, but. Yeah, you, you can just type a number. <coughs> Still fail. Did it fail again? Yeah. <laughs> Look up and see your error. Airlines dot type is required. Is 
So that would be like a post directory error, right? That's fun. So it's like posting to the wrong place, so it thinks it needs a bunch of other validation. Or so, how did you how did you or how did you determine that, Ian? Because I'm trying to like learn how to read these errors a little better than I do know. Well, uh, I could be wrong. It's just very familiar to something that I saw as an error when I had the wrong directory to my um, post over the weekend. Okay. And so I, that's just my first guess, maybe some, other, um, but I don't have all the information yet. Scroll up to the top. Was, of the, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Scroll up to the top of the air. I think this is the top of the air. Yeah. Right yeah. All right, um, but can you um go back to the uh, model of the flight jazz? Yeah, is it something to do with the? It, it looks like. Um... Uh, from the error message that the validation, which is either due to the validation on the form itself or the enum, um, is a little wonky. So um, it says your type is, oh, is it because you have type types, two objects within the type, essentially? Yeah, yeah, it's the, the airline, the enum should be within that object, right? Yeah, so line 18 right there, you should just say string. And then if you're gonna say required, you should do it underneath enum. So just like highlight. Uh, Why not just delete the yeah. other so, curly brace at the end of 18? Essentially. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. That's what I think, John. Well, then I would have to delete both of them. Yes, that, I think that's the point. Um, and then like you can get rid of required or like put on a new line essentially. Get rid of the first type or second yeah. type. What one of the types. types. Um, also, Jahan, um, so the way I read that, because I know you asked, I forget who you asked, but you asked somebody, I think it was Ian. Um, like how he read that. Um, I'm reading the error right now. Mm -hmm. And um, can you go back to the error yesterday when you're done with that? When you're done with that. Um, here. The, uh, yeah, that. Um, so, it, huh? No, go ahead. Sorry. I'm just. Oh, I'll just explain like what, how I figured that out. Um, so it says validation failed, airline.type uh, is required. Um, and that's like, I was like, oh, well, airline.type, the only place I know airline.type is usually called. And especially since it's on, um, is in the model, um, is in the flight schema because usually you have to, you know, you, like we learned, like it was like, you declare what type it is. So it sounded like there was an error with the type being declared. So yeah. once, once, once it scrolled to the top and I saw airline.type, I had a, I, I see where it's coming from. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you see if you have an error now? Yeah, it should work now. Okay, uh, let's read this one. Lights don't have reviews, they have tickets. What was that? You have flight.reviews. Uh, Your flights don't have reviews, but they do have tickets. Right. No, I don't see them. Okay, go back. It's gotta be tickets and ticket. 
I, I, yeah. I think you should be able to just refresh. You go back to your go back to your BS code. You so you still have view in here in the function, and it's got to be flight dot tickets dot for each, and then function, no tick ticket there. I think right. Yeah. Because that's what you're you're going through each ticket and tickets. Okay. And then it's got to be. I think at the beginning it has to be flight dot ticket. Correct. Dot, dot tickets dot, probably tic yeah, tickets tickets plural dot for each now give it a shot nice boom thanks guys that was, that's awesome what i'm curious about is why it threw an error related to flights when you were submitting a ticket because you're saving the flights this flight information so it revalidates at that time why why wouldn't it throw an error the first um i'm guessing that the flights that were there were created previous to that error being introduced to right the model if right. i were to guess That's awesome thanks guys but you wouldn't have been able to create additional flights with that error in the model you would have been stuck with the flights that had already been created. Nice. All right. Anyone else? For uh -huh. me, I'm just having. Sorry about that. Um, what? I just, I'm just not about this lab, but I just need to submit the lab from which is due today, but I can't push it. Okay. Uh, well, let's let's take about. Let, we'll take a look at it that uh, during the break. Okay. All right, just so you know. No worries. Uh, mine, Hunter, was related to setting up the model for the flight. Um, I think it's actually from Mongoose Flights Part 1, technically, but I, I realized I skipped over it. We have a default value on that. Um, it's one year from the created date. And ah. I, yeah, and I that, that one kind of wrecked me. OK. Uh, do you want a screen share? Ed? Yeah, happy to. Awesome. So, yeah, this is a fire fire. That I uh, I don't have much to show. Um, oh, that's good. I have this wonderful line of filler. <laughs> okay, cool. So where it says default, you can actually set that and uh, drop a, a function in here. So in in my example, I have uh, you can do something like add one year or get you know future year or something like that, and you'll just invoke it here. Or, or you, you could actually write it out, but am I, I, am I doing that the right way? Sorry, I can't quite. I, I would just invoke it here and then write it above at the very top, just to keep it oh, sort of separated. like uh, outside of the mm -hmm. of the scheme itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see, add one year. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and. Uh, do it step by step. So you can do something like, first we need to get the, the current date. And I, I think this will be, this is gonna be based on our server. So it might not be entirely accurate, but it'll be um, useful to kind of see the steps. So you can do uh, const today. today. And then you can set that equal to a new date. So that's, so that's gonna get us the current date. Is that right? As, as you like that? Yeah, and then go ahead and invoke that. There you go. And then we can do something like const future. And then you can set that equal to, so we'll grab today and do today dot get full year. And all of this is, uh, if you go to MBN and look up um, date, you'll see all these, these useful um, methods in the date object. So get full year and then add one after get full year. Just bam. Mm -hmm. And then you can do, you can grab today again and we can set the full year. Oh, that's not right, is it? Uh, 
that, that whatever you want to call that, we're, we're, the, the final output will be still be today. So then we're going to do today dot set full year. So we're going to update the year in the to do in today. And you're going to do uh, set full year parentheses future. Uh, and then let's just go ahead and console log um, today. Cool. And then if you um, node this file, we should be able to see. Oh, and then go ahead and uh, invoke it below on like on line 32. Look at that. Look at that. Let's uh, barely read it. Uh, yeah, so you can see it added um, one year to today. It definitely did. Okay, so I would just want to put. Uh, oh, what did I do? Does that look right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So you set the, the default uh, to whatever the output of that function is. So you'll just want to change the console log on line 30 to a return. Sense. It now. Cool. I've, I've noticed VS Code is running a lot slower these days. Like, Colors have been weird for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Week or so. Oh, I thought it's my computer. <laughs> Mine's kind of warm right now, too. So I could be. I appreciate it. Thank you, Hunter. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks so much for asking that question. I totally forgot I was having the same problem or the same, like, I couldn't figure out how to do that. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Um, I know Ian kind of went over it the other day, but I'd be interested in just seeing someone's code who's sorted everything by date, just so I can kind of wrap my head around it a little bit. Cool. Yeah. Um, Ian, do you, do you want to screen share? Uh, yeah. Give me one sec. Okay, Dylan, can you um, ask one more time what you're looking for? Um, so you, you went over this the other day and I know you had kind of hard coded it into your EJS file, but I'm just interested in seeing how you grabbed all of the data and then were able to sort it by date. Right, okay, gotcha. Um, so that will be in the index, is that right? By date. This part, right? Uh, yes. And this had some, I, as David, I think it was David brought up, there's some <laughs> issues with this, but for the sake of like what we're doing right now. Um, yeah, I mean, like current time and local time versus server right. time, which is fine. We can get to that when we get to that, though, for now. Yeah. But basically, just used a, um, oh, wait, no, this is the display, right? Sorry, give me one second. I think I actually did end up moving it. So let me see if I can find that for you. Uh, VNR controller. Yes, okay, I ended up moving it into a dot sort um, so that now as it's going through um, this controller, it's actually sorting them by uh, ascending order, which I just sort of found this in the docs. There's like a bunch of different ways you can write this. Apparently you can like make it shorter as well. Like you can do like ask. Um, I wrote it out so that I would remember what it meant <laughs> when I was actually looking at it. But. And by you grabbing that right there, it'll bring everything else to and sort it with it. 
it, yeah, it's basically, it's sort of like our normal um, JavaScript sort function where it's basically picking like one like aspect of it to sort and then everything else is still coming. It's just using that as the sort mechanic. So it's specifying like, I want you to sort by this um, specific uh, parameter and then have it go by either ascending or descending. Um, I haven't looked at it, if there's like a bunch of other options. I'm sure there are a couple more, but I know the sending and descending are like the two primary ones, obviously. All right, yeah, that's super cool. Okay. Yeah, and you can just okay. change the sort so at the end easy of the too. Yeah, you can chain the sort at the end of the find, even though the render is like visually in the middle, which was a little bit for me to wrap my head around, but um, yeah, it, it works. Uh, yeah, that's what I was wondering about, the render in the middle and the sort yeah. at the end, but it, as long as it works, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. It's so easy and it's awesome. Great. Very nice. All right. I think that's a good oh, stop on, on on that i think it makes sense if you think about it as is is render is that from mongoose hunter because so. i'm thinking of it as font, dot find dot sort like that's that's mongoose but res mm -hmm. dot render i don't think that's mongoose right no i don't think so so that's it's how less. i think about it right it's like yeah yeah why and we'll get into like a, I'll show you, um, I actually, I think later today on like kind of a better way to format this. So it's a little bit more logical. So it's not like, oh, this is happening after this in my code, but it's actually happening alongside this. Like we'll get to that and solve those issues as well. Whenever we move into uh, promises and all of that starting today. Mongoose also has an, an it, this dot exec execute method where you can put all your callbacks. It, like if you wanted to read in order. Oh yeah, Hunter has a good, if, if you need, he has a good like easier to read version of this that does the same thing that'll make it make a lot more sense. Um, he sent me when I was talking to Ethan about this. So. And like 20 characters and it does it for you. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> Already impl implemented it. Nice. Yeah, Mongoose. All right. Well, great job, everybody. That was an awesome review. Um, I think that's a good stopping point. Should we take a short break and then jump into the lesson? I assume back in nine minutes? Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> Slowly <laughs> earning <Thunder>. authority <laughs> to set the be back by time. <laughs> taking the power. <laughs>